this stream flows into our secluded forest lake. And this is the lake. And the owner of the lake is Mr. Beaver. Hi, I'm Boris the Bee Guy. And this is my lakeside forest beehive apiary, where all the bee colonies have overwintered well in horizontal lanes hives. This week, one of the overwintered colonies has swarmed, that is naturally split themselves into two. And the swarm actually moved into one of my smaller unoccupied lanes hives, here, placed just for bee swarms to move in about 100 yards from the apiary. So we'll go into the next winter with at least seven bee colonies. Most of my first colonies came from another local treatment-free beekeeper. I only use Lane's horizontal hives with deep frames. These hives have been used continuously since the 19th century, as they are easy to manage with minimal disturbances to the bees. These hives are very popular in Spain and France and are now gaining popularity in the US, especially in the areas with cold winters. At the heart of a Lane's hive is its frame, 13 inches wide by 16 inches deep. This frame was designed to imitate the size and positioning of comb found in natural tree hollows. A single movable frame is a beekeeper's equivalent of a single honeycomb. Frames make it easy to inspect and manage the beehives without dealing with a tangled up mess. Here's a typical layout for my 20 frame lanes hive at the height of summer. The bees choose frames next to the open entrance to raise brood and frames farther from the open entrance they use as honey stores like the bees do in natural tree hollows. The very first beehive that used frames for honeycomb was invented in 1814 by a Ukrainian beekeeper Petro Prokopovich, and that invention revolutionized beekeeping. In this picture, you can see two different frame types side by side. On the left, a shallow frame from a conventional vertical Langstroth hive, and on the right, a deep frame from a horizontal lens hive. The darker parts of the frame, that's where the brood was reared. They correspond to a roughly spherical brood nest shape in the hive. One of the reasons for darker brood cell color is that brood cells get very special treatment by worker bees. This picture is from National Geographic, a picture of a single larva cell. Take a look at the walls of this cell. In brood cells, a developing larvae a fed pollen and royal jelly hundreds of times each day. And then the bees disinfect these cells with propolis and while all brood has been reared by late fall, the brood cells and its walls always contain the remnants of all of these beneficial compounds. Dark honeycomb cannot be harvested by conventional beekeepers as they put human engineered pest control chemicals or their so-called organic pest control substitutes right into the brood nest. We don't do any of that and we harvest our honey in the fall after all brood has been reared. So our dark honeycomb is then safe for consumption and our fall honey always contains some dark honeycomb with its wellness boosting fermented pollen, propolis and complex flavors and aromas. While the border of darker brood comb appears oval or circular on individual frames, the broodness spanning several frames is a three-dimensional shape, a sphere. The reason for a roughly spherical shape of a brood nest is that the bees tend to cluster in the shape of a ball around the brood to keep the brood and the queen warm, especially during the cold months when they form a winter cluster. So a cluster is just a big ball of bees that spans multiple frames. In late fall, as soon as the temperatures drop to below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, to conserve the heat, the bees huddle together inside the hive, forming a winter cluster around the queen to keep her warm. The bees in the cluster vibrate their abdominal muscles to create heat and they replenish their energy by consuming honey. As the outside temperatures get progressively colder, the bees cluster becomes tighter and rounder like a ball. A very strong bee colony will form a basketball sized winter cluster. The shape of a cluster varies depending on the depth of the frame. In conventional Langstroth vertical hives, the bee cluster takes the form of an ellipsoid. It looks like an American football. In horizontal hives with deep frames, such as in horizontal lanes hive, the shape of a cluster tends to be purely spherical, like a soccer ball or a basketball. And this is a combined frame, 
where just the top part originally came from a conventional, just 9 inch deep shallow frame. So you can see the dark brown trace of a previous oval shaped brown comb. But once combined within the deep 16 inch frame, with a greater depth, the new capped brood cells already exhibit a circular shape. Because bee cluster spans multiple frames, an oval shape versus a circular shape of brood areas on individual frames is the evidence of three-dimensional clusters shaped either like ellipsoid or sphere respectively. An ellipsoid shape looks like an American football, while a sphere is like a soccer ball or, if you prefer, a basketball. Compared to an ellipsoid, a sphere is a shape with a higher volume to surface area, and that means that given the same number of bees within these two cluster shapes, the spherical shape exposes fewer bees to cold than an ellipsoid shape. So the bees wintering in an ellipsoid cluster in conventional Langstroth hives with shallower individual frames have to work harder and use up more energy and consume more honey to maintain the same temperature in the center of the cluster, around 93 degrees Fahrenheit, 34 degrees Celsius. A single large box of a horizontal hive has just one row of multiple deep frames, each frame containing a single contiguous honeycomb up to 16 inches deep. The bees select the areas right next to the open entrance for their brood nest, shown as dark brown frames, and the areas farther from the open entrance as honey stores. This picture shows a midsummer schematic view of our 20-frame horizontal hive with all frames placed inside the hive. During late fall and early spring, however, only about a third of the space is used and flanked by a divider board. A smaller beehive size, like an actual tree hollow, benefits over wintering. It's cozier and warmer in a smaller space. Just like a natural tree hollow, 16-inch deep frames in a horizontal hive represent contiguous honeycombs with no gaps in between. In contrast, a typical conventional Langstroth vertical hive consists of multiple smaller boxes stacked up vertically where each box contains a row of much shallower frames and there's a gap between lower and upper frames in between the individual boxes. During cold winters, the winter bee cluster moves only upwards, approximately one millimeter per day. As the heat from the cluster rises, it helps melt the capped honey right above the cluster. And that's the reason for slow upward cluster movement during cold winter months. And here's what happened in the vertical hive when the bees from a lower brood box while moving upwards have starved after consuming the last bits of a honey band on a lower frame. But due to a cold snap, were unable to bridge the gap between lower and upper frames where there were more honey, more honey stores. Multiple bees have died with their heads down in the cells. And here's another example of the same phenomenon illustrated by Dr. Leo Sharashkin from HorizontalHive.com. The bees starved, unable to bridge the gap between lower and upper shallow frames. Even though there was honey on the left side of this particular bee cluster, during cold winters, in order not to lose heat, the bees are programmed not to break cluster and only go upwards and could not get to that honey on the side. For every locality with cold winters, we can easily calculate the safe width for a band of honey above the bees on a contiguous single frame so that the bees will winter successfully. In main zone 5, the maximum time that the bees will remain in the winter cluster is 5 months, approximately from November 1st to March 31st. That's the maximum time when it can be contiguously so cold here that the bees will only be able to go upward one millimeter per day, consuming the honey from the honey band on top. One millimeter per day for five months is 150 millimeters or 5.9 inches. Let's round it up further to six inches. That's the safe width of the honey band above the bees. So in main, any brood frames with top honey bands less than at least five inches, like this one, should be taken out in late fall they will be unsafe to leave for wintering. But this brood frame should be left for the bees. It will be super safe. The biggest winter cluster of bees can be up to a basketball size. And the diameter of the regulation size basketball is 9.5 inches. Let's round it up further to an even 10 inches in diameter. That's 25 centimeters. 
So the winter bee cluster of a maximum 10 inches in diameter will start wintering under the honey band of a maximum of 6 inches in width. That means that the frame that will be safe for wintering in main zone 5 should have the maximum depth of 16 inches. And it so happens that 16 inches is exactly the depth of a frame in a lane's horizontal hive. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe.